Today I've got you all the fall decor inspiration you need for this year. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome back. So I thrifted this little tin bit from a Goodwill. And I'm just going to take my newfound sanding block from Dollar Tree. I've, I've not seen these, so they're not in my area anyway. Um, but this works really well, really, really well. And I'm not busting up my fingernails while I'm doing it. So I was unable to remove this label and I didn't want to take the time to soak it off, um, you know, overnight. I needed to get this done. So I decided to sand it down, especially around the edges to make it nice and smooth. So now that everything feels like it's nice and flat, don't worry, we will be disguising this with paint. We're gonna clean it off. I'm just using a baby wipe and then I'll dry it off. Then we're gonna take it and spray paint it with two coats of that olive green. Now we're gonna have a brown and a green here. I do change that green to a different shade. All right, so I'm gonna take this bath sponge from Dollar Tree, tear it up. Uh, you don't want any square edges, okay? no square edges and I'm gonna start dipping into that brown this true brown and I'll start stippling this all over and I'm just gonna turn that sponge to give it different you know I don't want there to be a discernible pattern so I'm just gonna turn it in different directions press down harder in some spaces and a little lighter in others idea is to make this look like it is aged and it's been sitting out somewhere in somebody's lovely little happy garden where of course there are sunflowers growing and we are changing from summer to fall okay so now we got it looking nice and rusty we're going to add layers onto this the spray paint had a satin finish and I really want to cover up the shine so we're gonna do that in a few steps take whatever green that you like this looks like a nice green to me it's got that warm coloring in it and it looks like moss so I'm just gonna tap this all over and I'm using a smaller section of the sponge to do that I didn't wash out the sponge because we're gonna be using the brown again as we layer on the texture from the paint now I'm just gonna dot this on I'm gonna go around and make sure that all the little areas on the handle and in the corners side are covered and we're gonna let that dry. Looks a little loud right now, but don't worry. We're gonna go back over it with a little more brown. Now there's barely any brown in here. I'm just getting small amounts of brown and I'm going to tap that over. And I'm looking for the places where I still have a little shine left and I'll just dot that around. You can use, if, if you're trying to get like a specific corner or around the edges, just take one finger and press that down and it will go a little bit darker into those areas be sure you get your handle too they do have something on a smaller scale at Dollar Tree I saw recently it is much smaller but it is tin and it is thinner as well but you get the idea and you could certainly use the same technique I'm going to use a little bit of cool temp hot glue and drop down some floral foam in the bottom to hold our floral arrangement together now this is going to be a super easy floral arrangement with all of our greenery coming from Dollar Tree so we've got some beautiful eucalyptus. We've got that little pig over there on the side that is just stunning. I cannot believe it came from Dollar Tree. And then we're also going to use some mums from Dollar Tree. Now, so these are, when you get them from Dollar Tree, they're usually all pushed together. Divide those up, kind of pull the picks out a little bit and slide those pieces of leaves down your stem so that they look even. It's going to give you a, a more of a high end look. We're just gonna put the whole entire pick in the back center. Very easy to do. Now these are the moms that have the little bit of like a meshy or burlappy kind of, burlappy, yeah, kind of texture in them. And uh, so we're gonna add those in, the entire pick. And we're gonna do it mm, sort of off to the right a little bit, but don't be too obsessed with where you put it right now because things can be moved. They're on wires and you can bend them. Then I'm going to grab another same one and I'm going to press that down. I'm trying to make sure that the taller ones, because there's usually one taller, you know, in the picks that you get from Dollar Tree. I'm trying to put, arrange those so that they are pushed toward the center so that the arrangement is higher in the center. So that's what you see me doing here. 
You see how that goes? It's kind of graduated from the back down to the front. I'm going to grab this pick now and just pull it apart. You can see me down there in the right bottom corner. And then I'm going to place it down, rather pushing the stem back into the gap between the two floral bundles. And then I'm going to move those around a bit, kind of thread my little flowers through there. and then decide if I need a little more fullness at this point. And you could leave it like this, but I think I want one more pick off to the right. So I'm going to bend and turn those a little flick on the bottom to make them kind of go outward instead of straight up. I'll take that third pick. So, so far we have one, two, three, four, five picks in here. And what a pretty arrangement that makes. Very simple, very wild, cottagey looking. So grab your ribbon. Here's my little hoard of fall ribbon. Choose the one that you like and that coordinates with the colors you have. And this one, this one I believe I got at the thrift store. Look at this, y'all. Have y'all ever seen one of these? I know some of you have, because some of you sew. And this goes way back, I do believe. I love it though. It's better than a pin cushion. It's just wound up paper. I love it. So, I am going to make a little bow for this. I'm going to flip this over on itself. This is about six inches. So that's one, two, three times so far. And I want to leave a bit for a tail. So we're going to have five loops. Three on one side and two on the other. And then I'm going to cut the remainder off to make uh, some little tails. Okay, this is wired ribbon, so it's going to fold and stay together nicely. I've just chosen a little thin gold ribbon here. Not even entirely sure where this came from. And then I'm going to fold it to make sure that my loops are the same, just giving me an idea of my placement. Then I will grab that center, flip it over, and then start bunching up the fabric from the bow. Get that ribbon in there and just pull it, make sure that I'm still in my center, and pull it tight in the middle. It's going to sort of pleat it in the middle, but don't be too concerned about that because you're not going to see the back of your bow, right? So a couple of knots is going to keep that locked in place. Then you can pull your little loops out. Obviously, if you use more than six inch uh, folds, then you're going to have a bigger bow. If you use less, you're going to have a smaller bow. Smaller bows are a little more difficult to handle if you have vision problems and if you have problems with your dexterity. So if your hands are weak or, you know, you have arthritis, it's a little more to worry with when you get down to smaller size bows with all the fluffing. Okay, so all the little tail pieces I'm going to cut in a dovetail and then the little extra pieces that are in the inside of the bow we're going to pull those out and we'll give those a little dovetail too because you can show those in your bow when you get it you know on your piece you can flip those around and you can have those showing too and it gives you a little more fullness and then it's not the same bow that everybody else has right we want something unique and something that brings us joy in our home all right so i'm going to use a pick this is like a I don't know, it's just a dowel. It's a, a thin dowel that I thrifted and I had a, a bunch of them all in a rubber band. And these work really well for putting things in florals. So I'm just gonna add some hot glue and then I'm gonna tie a very tight knot over the hot glue is really gonna lock that bow in place. You could always glue to the metal, but if you use hot glue on metal, it could pop off. And I'm just going to say that most people don't have E6000 sitting around or the time to wait for it to dry. So we're gonna use hot glue for this and this method. Now, once that glue is dry, because we don't wanna make a mess, we'll be using it in here. You're gonna trim off as much as you need so that it will sit down in your little bucket. Obviously, if you use the Dollar Tree one, it's going to be a smaller bucket, so make your little stem a little bit shorter. And then flip those tails, all those little tail pieces out. And you can trim them down if you need to, and fluff out the pieces of your bow. This has five loops in it. I think the look of this is super cute. If you don't like the bow, you can certainly leave it out, but it gives it a little extra some, I don't know, like festivity, I think. 
really says that you are welcoming fall from summer into fall. Yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. What do you think? Think of all the options for colors that you can use in Dollar Tree. They really have got some beautiful florals. I just really hope that your stores have the florals that my stores have. But if not, substitute where you need to. Grab those scraps from last year. All right, I'm going to use a brush. This is for my Mod Podge. I'm going to use matte, just my choice. I have a little squeegee and a calendar that I found at Goodwill. What a beautiful calendar. Look at these pictures. Oh, that owl. This is the one we're going to use, okay? I'm going to carefully tear that out. This is some piece of wood that I have finished in another project. And we're going to use it again. And believe it or not, the wood came from Goodwill. I've got two different pieces. Now, when I say Goodwill, I mean the Goodwill bins. It's not your, it doesn't have like price stickers and things that you have to go by. There's no shelves and anything set up fancy. No, not at this one. This is the bins. You got to dig for your treasures, right? I'm going to take a little bit of this mist, it's alcohol, and then a little finger dauber and use that technique that Trish and Kay used over on their channel, Crafting Cousins. All right, so I'm going to color my edges. I tore the paper first like they do, and I am coloring my edges. Just tapping in there and making them darker. Now, if you don't have like an alcohol spray, you can also use the uh, antiquing wax to do this, certainly. And this is gonna give it like a dark edge. I decided since it didn't look centered and I accidentally tore a little too much, that I will make this more of a round picture and put everything in the center. Got these little Dollar Tree pieces and I got those last year. I'm gonna add some of this Mod Podge onto the board and then I will spread it out mainly off to the side because this is where I want that beautiful print to be. Off on the side. And then we'll cover the whole thing so the finish is the same all over. So I'm gonna press this down in place. We're gonna do a little something extra on the side going to add some of that Mod Podge to my edges. I did not have to squeegee this down. Uh, it laid down flat. But if you need to squeegee, squeegee. Put it down and then make sure everything is nice and flat. Okay, then we're going to cover the entire board and let it dry. I also went into the raw edge and um, put some Mod Podge on there and it's not quite dry yet. That's why you see the white. That's just to keep it from falling apart some of this beautiful mesh ribbon and some green ribbon from Hobby Lobby last year on clearance. Then I'm gonna use a furniture repair marker and go all the way over my sign. I love to color. I don't make time to do it like I used to because I craft, so I still get that little artistry out in my crafts. <clears throat> but I love to do this. And some people enjoy watching people paint and to color, so I put this in for y'all. Enjoy, and you're welcome. All right, I used maple for this. It has sort of an orangey tone to it, so I just used that color for the pumpkins. Then we're gonna cut down that mesh. Flip that over. And instead of gluing, I'm gonna use my short staples here. Excuse the blurriness when I staple. Okay, and then it's gonna be even more secure once we put down this ribbon. We're gonna layer this on top. They are two different sizes so they make a nice look because you can still see the back. Then we're gonna do both of these staple down. It's gonna stay in place forever. Well, maybe not forever, but you know, for a long time. These came from Dollar Tree, I think. I've had these forever. We're gonna add this and just add, a, you know, as a little embellishment underneath the Hello Fall. I think it sets it off. It gives it some dimension. And I just enjoy it like this. So I'm gonna go over it with my glue and glue it down. And the good thing is this leaf has burlap over the top so that glue is gonna go through it and that is gonna be a nice solid adhesion. Now, yeah, I had to turn it just a tad to the side because it wasn't even while the glue is not dry yet. And this is the result of that. See up there, the Mod Podge is still a little bit wet but it'll dry. You can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 6. Subscribe for free, and I'll see you in the comments. We're going to need floral foam. We're going to need three of these planks that are the same size as the um, 
panel plank that you see down there. I only had two, so we're going to use an Easter sign for the other. We're going to need a trellis from Dollar Tree. I'll be using some cutting tools and a metal ruler. We're going to take the hangers off and the tags off because we are not going to be needing those for this project. We're going to turn these signs into a box. That's right, a planter box. So I'm going to cut these at 18 inches. I'm going to measure down from the end and make two marks on each of these planks. And it's actually going to be all three of them because I have to cut the other one to make as the bottom. These will be our sides. The short pieces that we have left over are going to be the end pieces. And then the bunny sign, the section we cut off of that will be the bottom. So I'm scoring this and this is just a carving tool and I'm just going to cut, cut, cut into there. Now, if you don't want to do it this way, go ahead and use your miter box and your saw. When you cop it like that, if you have not scored it on the other side too, you will have some, some breaking. I did, you can see here how I goofed it up. I left it in here so you could see. I'm going to use a permanent marker and cover it up. Now you'll never even know. How about that? We don't give up that easy, do we? Okay, I'm going to take some of my building blocks and start looking at how we want to assemble that. There's the bunny sign. So I know the bunny's going to be the bottom, these are going to be the sides, and they are going to stand like so. Okay? In my mind, I'm thinking of where I'm going to glue everything. So, if you go to the inside, about as wide, and I'm not giving you an exact measurement because I don't do that on my channel, <laughs> but it's about an eighth of an inch fourth to an eighth of an inch just enough room so that these are supports and when we set that other panel up it is going to sit snugly against that right up against those little pieces okay so we got the bottom down now I'm gonna add glue I'm gonna just line it up so I know exactly where those blocks are I'm gonna add my glue flip it up sit it down on that base and hold it tight now I'm gonna hold it there for a minute or so so that that glue is dried then I'm going to go around, turn it around to the other side, and we'll do the same exact process on this side. So the building block is attached to the bottom and attached to the side. These are our supports that are going to hold it all together. This is a piece that you will need to keep inside. This is not real wood, and if it gets rained on, it will fall to pieces. This is an inside arrangement only, folks. Okay, so lift it up, push it down so that it's sitting on that base. Once it's cooled, we'll start on the sides. Same process here for the end pieces. And you can see how these are these these signs are a little bit warped. They always are when I get them from Dollar Tree. I don't know if it's just my store. Do y'all experience that too? No worries though, they're so lightweight. We're gonna make this work. So I'm going to use these on the sides as well. I'll have glue to the short part and to the thick part and then that way I am gluing you'll see here so the short side and the thick side and then I will push those right up so that both pieces touch each side or the side in the end leave it there hold it hold it and wait I didn't make y'all watch me hold it the whole time and then I'll go back in with my glue once everything's cooled and go around all of the seams with my glue. This is just going to give it more support and more stability. Here we are on the last section we have to glue down. Same exact process. Supports, holding those together. Okay, so now we're going to take that black chalk paint that I have and I just chose to go over all of my edges. Now you don't have to do this because it already looks rustic and old. You know, it's the same colored as what it is in all of those little cracks in the planks. You could totally leave it like that if you want to. But I just wanted to show you what you could do if it bothers you. The holes that are in the ends, fill those with a little hot glue. When the glue is dry, go ahead and paint them. And then you won't see those holes at all. This is going to need some weight. So I found these wood scraps that my husband had left over from something he was working on. And I'm going to use these just to put in the bottom. It's going to work as a platform and it is also going to give it weight. So yes. So it will not flip over when we add our things to it. I decided to use a pool noodle. 
Cut that down where it fits in each side down there. Adding some glue to those pieces of wood scrap. I'll push those down in there. And this is just going to add a little bit more height in there so that the box, I don't have to reach so far down with the stems. You know, if you put your foam too far down, then your flowers are going to disappear into the box. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to trim down the leftover section and just add those little pieces of pool noodle scrap right down in there. And then I'll add some more foam right on top. Now this foam is like packaging foam, so it's kind of a, it's a really good quality foam. It works well, and I like to save it when I get things, and I'm always buying something. Okay, so I'm, I got this at the thrift store, but you can get like the hula skirts uh, from Dollar Tree if they still have them. And you can use this or some type of raffia if you have a big bundle and just pull out sections, cut it off, and just press them down in there. I like to kind of wind mine up a little bit so it doesn't fall all over the place. Still gonna be a little fallout while you're putting it together though. And this is gonna kind of cover up the gaps if you put your flowers in and you can still, still see through them. I don't want that white to be showing. So these are leftover picks that have already been used before in other projects. I'm gonna use these. I'm also gonna use some scraps of leaves. And then I knew I wanted to use sunflowers for this, but any you can use mums or anything that you wanna use. I just like to use the sunflowers. Now I chose sunflowers. These came from Dollar Tree that have a golden tint in the center. So they're yellow and gold. Some sunflowers are just all yellow, but I wanted mine to look more fall. So I chose these. I'm gonna cut these down, leaving them as long as possible. And the last one I'll leave on a long pick so that we have one long flower. I also have some sunflowers that are thrifted uh, as well. Now I'm gonna add my trellis. I'm not gonna get it all the way against the backboard because I don't want the balance to be kind of even though I put the blocks in the back, I'm just, I worry that it might try to tip over. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna leave some space there. But I'll show you how to secure it. Now we've pushed it down into the foam and I'm also going to use some of these blocks. I'm using three because that's the, the space of mine between the wall of the box and the back of that trellis. See, it fits perfectly in there. That's gonna give me some more stability. I'll add some hot glue to the box and some hot glue on the back and the front side of the trellis and then I'll use a little black paper to cover that up to help hold everything down. And it should be pretty darn secure at this point. Okay. Now the fun part, we get to start putting our beautiful little planner together. So I'm gonna take these picks that look sort of like Milo or wheat to me. It's probably not what they are, but that's what they look like to me. So we're gonna go with it. I'm going to put one on each side. If I would have had three, I would have put one in the middle. And cutting these apart makes a huge mess because they have grassy pieces that will fall out and they are free. They're not even on a stem. They're like wrapped around like a continuous piece. So yeah, not going to do that. They have really pretty wheat picks at Dollar Tree too. If you can still find them, they are, they're very nice. All right, so here's some of my thrifted ones. They're on longer stems, so they are going to go in the back. If I would have had even longer pieces, I would have put them up higher than the grassy sections on the side. Ideally, that's how I would do it, but we're gonna make this work, okay? So I'm gonna continue to put these around. You know, sunflowers follow the sun, right? So ideally, I would have them all facing the same direction. You don't have to do it that way. Um, you could definitely put them off to the side or, you know, perhaps if they are nestled underneath the grasses, they can't get to the sun like the rest of them. And that could be why they're shorter. We're gonna go with that. That's a pretty good excuse to me. We're gonna go with that. Okay. <laughs> ah! Okay, we're gonna just start adding in here. Now, like I said, some of them are shorter, some of them are longer. I want my longer ones to be toward the back and the shorter ones are going to be more toward the front. You may do this any way you like. I am also taking the heads of the flowers and twisting them where they are attached to the wire. If you bend that wire, it will make them face out. 
and that's what I want them to do. So that's what I'm going to do. Now these obviously are not all the same. I'm not bothered by that. I am using what I have left. And I don't think it's that noticeable in the end. Y'all can see my craft room around me. And for those of you who are already members, there are five of you and I am so excited. So just to give y'all a little mention, thank you, Tammy, Sheila, Nojo, Jane, and Betty, who are the new members for our brand new channel membership. You guys are gonna be able to take a look around my craft room and look at how I organize and all that behind the scenes stuff. So get ready, get ready. All right, now I'm gonna to continue to add in and some of these pieces I think one of these picks came from Timu that I took apart. I uh, picked off, see the little baby ones? I think that gives it a little more interest. I like those in there. Once I get all those flowers in there, I'm gonna start adding the leaf picks that I cut apart. And there's like four leaves on each one of these. Some of these are more yellow. Some of these are more, or they're more muted, I guess. And some of these are more orange. I'm just trying to kind of put them here and there. And it also helps cover up the base. Can you believe I am finally almost out of fall foliage picks? I cannot believe it. It's very exciting though, because that means I get to go thrift for more. I love to thrift. Okay, we're gonna continue along. I get bothered when I have matchy matchy side by side. So I, you know, you will see me move things around. That's just, just how my mind works. But you can feel free to do this any way you like. And you don't even have to add these if you don't want to. You know, make it your own. We're all about budget friendly and just taking inspiration, right? Uh, the things I do are to inspire you. You might not find the exact same thing that I have, but be inspired. I want you to start learning to think outside the box. What could you use instead? I get lots of great comments from people who tell me how they're gonna do, you know, something. Or I get emails from people who tell me, they show me their pictures and I can see how they took that inspiration and they made it their own. And that is awesome. I'm so proud of y'all. You're really getting it. You're getting it, y'all. So here's that completed box. I just used those same markers to color my Harvest Wish sign. Okay, so you see this orangey color here. I'm not digging the orangey glossy color. This is a full wood piece. It looked like somebody turned it themselves. I have had this for quite some time and I did get this while I was out thrifting. There are some cracks in here. There are some deep scratches and marks in here. I am going to start by attempting to get some of this, whatever this varnish stain or whatever off of it. And I am using a I think this is a 60 grit sandpaper that I have. Now at this moment, I have a sander, but it's a flat sander. So we're gonna give it a try with that flat sander and see what I can do with it. Now when using this, I'm trying to keep my vase rolling back and forth so I don't end up with any deep areas. I want it to be rounded. I want it to continue to keep that same form and I have to do that by rolling it back and forth. Okay, so once you have sanded it down quite some bit, and my husband did go get one with a point, so I was really able to do a much better job that time, and I used a 80 grit to get this look. And you can see that it still has that reddish color in there. I don't know what, te what technique that was, I don't know. But I'm gonna grab the P120 now and go over it to make it nice and smooth. So I did, and now I'm making sure that I have that cloth has barely any liquid, like a spritz of water on it, just to get all the dust off. And I have wiped it several times to get it nice and clean. And I'm just gonna leave it and just work with this color that's on here. I do want this to be brown, but I don't want it to be the tint, color, and look of the vase the way it was before. I just don't, I don't care for that personally in my decor. So, now, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. I'm going to use a Harvest Brown, add some water to it, and we're gonna make our own stain. This is not a new idea. People do this all the time, all the time. I'm gonna add water, I'm gonna mix it, but you see how much red has already come out in, the, in that paint? I was hoping for something a little more neutral, but 
that's okay because the way I do this, it's going to come back off. This is going to make, I'm almost doing like a wash over this. I'm working as quickly as I can. And this part is not sped up. As quickly as I can to slap some on there and then grab a rag and wipe it off. If you don't, you're going to have areas that have soaked in more and areas that are a little more faded looking. Of course, if that's the look you're going for, then you just do just that. Now, I didn't want to use a solid paint. I want to see the wood grain through here. It was a problem seeing it before, the way it was painted. It was just distracting because there was damage and everything. So I really want this to be something that is pretty and something that I can use in my fall decor. Because remember, you don't just get little tchotchke for fall, right? If you really love fall and you really love having seasonal decor in your home, you've got to have these workhorses or these pieces that you can use to do your, you know, if you want to do some florals and change out some florals, well, you have to have these kinds of things. So rather than buying them, we're gonna flip our own. Okay, so once it's been applied and I have wiped it all off and my hands look awful, like I've been digging in raw clay, we're going to start adding a little more aging to it. So I'm gonna add a little bit of black, mix it in there. This is going to make it very dark brown. I'm gonna add a little more water in here, and then I'm going to put it back into the little spray bottle. I have some of these spray bottles. You can get stuff like this in the uh, Dollar Tree over where they have their, uh, let's see, maybe the stuff that you take on an airplane, you know, stuff like that. So if you have maybe those alcohol dyes, you could probably do something here with that. I am just gonna spray it on quickly and then rub this in. This is going to give it some dark areas. It's going to give it some areas that look aged, but you have got to move quickly on this and cover your surface. I didn't cover my table and it was kind of yucky to clean up until I got out the, what is that, Mr. Clean thingy, the little eraser, and then I was able to get it off very, very easily. So I'm just going to add this a little at a time around the mouth, the bottom, the high parts, you know, just wherever to kind of make it look a little bit older and give it a little more of a streaky look, I guess. I just want it to be aged or antique looking. So when it dries, this is how it's going to look. Not very pretty, right? Not very pretty. We got more work to do. I'm going to grab some wax. This is our antiquing wax and I'm going to go right around the neck of this vase right around in there. I don't have a ton of paint and I'm going to kind of blend it up toward the mouth and then down over the rounded part of the vase. This is the area that would normally collect dust and be a little dirty anyway. It's going to give it definitely more dimension and curve. It really kind of shows off that curve. And I'll go all the way up to the lip, and then I'll also go on the inside. I'm just using circle, circular um, emotion around in here, just circular. And then the idea would be to go with the grain of the wood to bring out the grain of the wood, but to make it look a little more old, I'm just kind of going across it with this antiquing wax side to side first, and then blending it in with a dry cloth. And then I can start going down. I can start going with the grain of the wood and you will see that those bits will stick to the ridges in that wood and the loops in that wood and all those beautiful circular patterns. If you get a little too much wax in any one area, go ahead and grab your little sand and tool, sand a little bit and then go back over it. That's all you gotta do. And you see how this is really starting to look old and antique? This is exactly what I wanted for this beautiful vase. Now I'm going to make some dark areas. I'm going to just go in there and just kind of push down a little bit. I got my fingers on the bristles and I'm kind of like pushing down into it to make some darker spots. And you can see how it's going to look with just that wax on it. Very pretty already, I'm very happy with it. But now we're gonna use my wood conditioner and I will link the video up here for you so you can see how to make your own. It was not hard to do. This is what I use on charcuterie boards and you would use these on your cutting boards too. 
So I'm just going to take a little scrap of fabric that I have because I don't get rid of anything. <laughs> and once I've given that darker wax a little time to dry, I'm going to go ahead and go into my wood conditioner. And now this bottle, since I have used it for decorative purposes, this particular jar will only be for decorative pieces, uh, conditioning decorative pieces. Because I've, di I've dipped into the Waverly wax and then dipped back down into the wax that is supposed to be food safe, rendering it no longer food safe. So you get the point. And you can see the difference on the wood with and without that conditioner. Beautiful. So I'm going to continue along and just really go over this, like I said with the other piece, you know, really blend it in there, massage that down into your surfaces. This I don't know if it is waterproof or not, but I'm not going to be using it with water in it, so that won't be a concern. And I just absolutely love the way that this vase is starting to look. It is definitely the look that I was going for in my home. Definitely. And if you can't find a wood piece for this, you know, kind of fake it. Just fake it with something that you have that may be plastic, you know. An old jug that you may have. What about an old pitcher that you're not using to drink from anymore? You can definitely do some type of a wood looking method on that if you would like. Yes. Now it is exactly how I envisioned it. And I'm going to show you how it will look when you get it fixed up. You want to put your decor in it. I've just grabbed some pieces that are thrifted pieces that I've had for a little while. I'm going to trim up what I need to trim. I'll grab some daisies from Dollar Tree and I'll add those. They're, out, they're actually Black Eyed Susans, I think. And I'll just add those to show you how we do it. Very simple. Nothing, nothing fancy and no, no foam or anything in this project. You just poke them down in there. Very pretty. I'm going to use some Jenga blocks, some wood leaves from Dollar Tree, a piece of pretty fall paper, and then some more of that same leather. I'm going to trim this down so that one of these pretty leaves can then be covered in, in that pretty paper. So I'm just going to trim this down where it's more workable. I'm going to use some spray adhesive. Now the spray adhesive was coming out kind of chunky here, so I had to clean the tip and then spray it a couple of times. And before it dried, put it down on my leather piece. Press it in place really, really well before I flip it over, because it takes a minute for that glue to kind of stick. Then I'm going to quickly flip it and then work out any of the bubbles that are in the side of it. I'm just holding it in place and then pressing it out with my hands. You can also use a roller if you want to do it that way. I'm going to use my little, uh, my little knife here that comes from the Dollar Tree. Love these things. Yes, they are sharp, so you have got to be careful. They do come in a three pack. That makes it pretty awesome. So I'm just going to trim as close as I can, as neatly as I can, around this pumpkin. Now, I did reinforce the tips with a little bit of hot glue just to hold that in place so I could quickly get this project out for y'all. I'm going to go on to the other leaf and add a very nice, thick, evenly coat of glue on the back. This Elmer's glue is purple, so it makes it really nice so you can see exactly where you put the glue and where you miss spots, so it's good. While the school stuff is on sale, go ahead and grab some of these and add to your crafting toolkit. All right, so I'm going to flip it over, and it fits great on this piece of 12 by 12 um, crafting paper or decorative paper or scrapbook paper, whatever you want to call it. Use whatever you have for this, too. Whatever color you like, whatever you have. These leaves were used in another project from last year. That's why they're painted. Okay. So we're going to flip it over and be sure that we roll all of this down. I want it to stick to my glue nice and evenly. Everything to become one. Now you can use your scissors and just go ahead and start cutting pieces out. You don't have to fussy cut if you don't have fine um, tip scissors here. I'm going to show you what you can do. 
cut the majority of the paper off. You know, it doesn't take long to do this. Just cut it off. And then we will um, trim it down a little bit finer with this. If you want to do it this way, you certainly don't have to. If you don't, I have another option for you. But I'm just showing you here how close and clean the blade gets. You can really get in those spaces really well and just cut that off. Again, if you don't want to do it that way, that's fine because we are going to sand it down. I want to give you a lot of options so there's no excuses for not crafting. Grab a fingernail file, y'all. I love this. You can get into all those corners and round spaces and all it really is is a piece of sandpaper on a stick, right? So why not use it to sand your projects? You can also use those um, nail files from Dollar Tree. Have you ever tried using an emery board for sanding? Pretty crazy, but it works. And you can get big packs too, so that's awesome. So I'm gonna use furniture repair markers, and I think I use maple. I forgot to show you the color here, but I think I use maple. And I'm just gonna go around the edges of the leather one so that these edges don't stand out. You can use a little bit of paint here if you want, but I found that the furniture marker makes it really easy to go over narrow spaces, and I could quickly wipe it off of that leather if I went over. We're not going to do anything to the edges of this one, and this one has the dark edges now, and it blends in a little better. Oh, this is so pretty. I love this. Okay, so I'm going to use a furniture repair marker here any color that you want. I just pick this one out and then I'm gonna color these blocks because I don't want this pale color to show. I'm just gonna go ahead and color them. I'm gonna do four of them and two of them will be used on the back of each one of these leaves to help stand them up. The stem is so narrow you can't stand them up just on the stem. I mean you might but then you would be able to see your the appliance that you put on there to keep it standing up, you'd be able to see that, and I don't want to see that. I want it to almost be invisible, like it's floating there. So I'm going to lean this on its side, where the side is touching, and we're gonna put it right there on the side of the leaf. We're gonna do it on the left for one, and we're gonna do it on the right for the other leaf. That way you can put them together if you wanted to, or you could stand them separately. You could also make this one piece overlapping the middle if you would like and connect them together. So now I'm putting this one on. It looks good there. Find my position, find my spot. I know I'm going to need to put my glue there. So you can do it like this. So you put the glue on the block or the glue on the leaf. Really doesn't matter. And you want to stand it up while the glue is drying so that you know it's balanced. And that's what I'm doing, giving it a minute to dry and making sure it will stand. Now when you get ready to display these, you can use a tiny bit of that thick mounting double stick tape on the bottom of your Jenga blocks and that will help really. Y'all, I'm loving it with this leather this year. So this was just a salt jar. It had salt in it and uh, I saved it because I really like it, or the bottle. I'm going to use some of these beautiful leaf rub-ons. Yes, rub-ons actually work on, on this. I'm going to use those from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to take some more of that leather and some of these furniture nails or brads or tacks, whatever you have. You can spray paint tacks if you want to. And then you're going to have some tools here. I'm going to use my white chalk pen here that came from Dollar Tree and use it on the back side of this fabric and just draw out a circle that I know is going to fit on the front of my bottle. Now I am going to draw a narrow band, almost like a belt to connect to it, whatever size or width you want. And then I'm gonna cut that out with my rotary cutter on my mat. Easy. Now you can use the leather from the Dollar Tree to do this project because it's smaller and you won't need as large of a piece. So you could definitely use it on this. Okay, so I know I want it to go around the center of the bottle like this. And this leather piece is definitely big enough to go around. I'm gonna cut out the circle. I'm just gonna cut it off the big piece and then I'm gonna trim it down right along that white line. 
so that I have a circle like this. And you see how it fits perfectly on the bottle? That's why you need to measure it first. Then I'm gonna choose a leaf. I was so excited when I did a little sample with this to see that it actually works on this fabric. Now I don't know if it's gonna work on all fabric, but it worked on this one. I'm gonna cut it down to a manageable size, then I'm gonna apply the leaf that I like on top of it. If you press it down just a little, it kinda of, it will kind of stick just a tad for you, kind of hold itself in place just a little bit before you start really pressing it down. So I've kind of centered it here, and then I'm gonna take my plastic um, squeegee or whatever kind of tool you wanna to call this. It's actually to be used on vinyl. And I'm just gonna start pressing down and um, from the center outward. And I'm gonna hold it in place because I don't want it to skip up on me. So just take your time here, hold it in place. And then I want you to see how good this turns out. Oh my goodness. Peel it off slowly in case you need to rub it down a little bit more. Y'all, would you look at this leaf? It's gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, I'm so excited about this. This has really opened a door for opportunities in other projects, knowing that those will stick to this type of fabric. So exciting. Okay, so I'm just going to take my little um, pliers here. These are bull nose pliers. A lot of people ask me about these. They are wonderful, and I use them all the time in crafting. I'm going to cut those down so that the heads are flush. Now I need to find a positioning for this round disc. You can always use uh, lead this long and wrap it around the bottle but I wanted to make it a little bit shorter so I'll show you what I did I'm gonna use the center almost like a belt buckle and I'm using some e6000 here this is just the one that's branded for the uh, jewelry because it has a smaller tip but I took the tip off of it if you use hot glue on some fabrics it will pucker and I don't like that look so that's why I'm using the e6000 rather than hot glue here and I'm gonna use my little clamps to hold it in place for just a little while so it has time to kind of adhere. Now I'm going to wrap this around and this is when I decide I don't want to overlap it completely. I just want to overlap it just a little bit. So I'm going to trim it off here, leaving just enough so that I can tuck it and glue it underneath the round part. And I think that's perfect. Once my glue is dried, which doesn't take very long if you're careful with it, I'm gonna take the clamps off and then wrap it around the bottle. Kind of getting that centered so that it's, the circle's in place. I don't want it to stick up above the bottle um, curve there. I'm gonna wrap it around, hold it in place with my fingers. Same process as before, add my glue down here and then just press that down into place. I've already kind of eyeballed it and made sure that it's in the right spot. So then I decided to do a band around the top. So I'm just gonna cut a narrower piece and I'm gonna fit it around the top. Once I know how much I'm gonna need of that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off and then I am going to cut a little triangle in the end of it, just like that. And I like the way that looks. I'm gonna put the little joint in the back. Now, this will slide on and off the bottle, which is fine if you want to be like me and use your projects over and over again. So I don't want to glue it down to the bottle itself. I'm going to use a little bit of double stick tape. Um, and I'm just going to use that to help hold this in place. And it would be perfect. It'll last all fall season like this. And if I want to change it out, I can change it. Now I'm going to move on to those little um, furniture nails there. I'm going to add some hot glue. I got it on the cool temperature here so that I don't burn my fingers. And then I'm just going to position it where it looks like this was tooled together rather than glued together. What a pretty look. And I love that they're a bronzy or brown like color because they really blend in nicely with the leaf and the leather. This is, oh my gosh, this does not look handmade to me. This looks like something you would buy at a store. Look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? Oh, if y'all like it, please give me a thumbs up. Yes, I work hard. Yes just like y'all do. Okay, so now we're gonna use this as a vase and I'm just gonna cut down some uh, extra pieces that I've saved from other projects. And the hydrangea, I had an extra one of those so they match perfectly. And you can just make them into a little bundle here and use them like this if you would like. And it's really pretty, it'll fit right in the top. 
and this is how it will look. I've got this beautiful fabric. It does not have magnolias on it, but the flowers are similar enough, I think. And this grateful, thankful, blessed sign, those came from the thrift store. I have some paint, this is spray paint, and then my antiquing wax. I'm gonna use a couple of different brushes. I just recently picked this up at the thrift store. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? It's like a little magnolia swag. And then I have this picture that used to be in my daughter's room and she has outgrown it. So I'm gonna use my heat gun here, heat up those seams because they're glued and nailed down. Then I'm gonna use my knife to cut the seam. Then I'm going to just take this tool here and this is like a, I don't know, a spatula of some sort. And then I'm going to pull the back off carefully and then remove the little nails that are down in here clean up my edges, remove all that paper and bulky glue. I'm going to put my fabric down, the pretty side down on the mat. I'm going to lay the backing down and use it as a guide so that I can cut the fabric off. And this is my rotary knife, or my rotary blade, excuse me. And then I'm going to use my Mod Podge to put it down. I'm going to add quite a bit here because I want that fabric to stay in place. And then using my brush, I'm going to be sure to go around all the edges, all of the corners. All across the middle in a nice, even coat. So I want to take the opportunity to say welcome to any of you who are not familiar with my channel and have not been here before. If you've come over from, from Brenda's channel or from anybody in the playlist, you are very welcome here. I'm glad that you stopped by. I am always striving to bring you unique, budget-friendly DIYs. I use thrift and Dollar Tree supplies to make it economical for all of us. All right, so if we press it in place, I'm now gonna use my little Mod Podge roller and I'm gonna go all over it. Now this is gonna make that glue stick to the fabric and it's almost gonna appear as though it is painted down or if it was made as one piece. You can see how nice and smooth that is. Next, we're going to take this and spray paint it. I'm going to use one coat outside. And then while that's drying, I'm going to take this antiquing wax. I'm going to add a little water. This is my little water spray bottle here. I'm going to mix it up and we're going to make essentially a stain that will match the sun. Because it's kind of a gray wood now, I want to bring it to a richer color. So I'm just going to take a nice soft paintbrush here and start adding this down. It's nice and watery and it moves really nicely across this wood. It, this was not a sealed wood, so this is gonna go nicely in here. We're gonna go around the outside, the inside, and all of the edges, except where we're going to be gluing the backing back down. You don't wanna put any antiquing wax there because it could interfere with the um, ability of your glue to stick. And we don't want the back popping off, right? So since this is a standing picture, we don't want this in the way. I'm just gonna glue it down just to keep that little stand from moving around. Perfect. Now I'm gonna take that same antiquing wax mixture here that we made, the stain, with a very soft round brush, and I am just gonna go all over this piece. My idea for this was to take it from that brass, gold, whatever color that was that was on there, which actually was really pretty in itself. But I want this to look more like a wood piece. And uh, you'll, you'll see why in a moment. You'll, you'll understand in a moment. So keep going along here. You're gonna go in all the cracks. You're gonna go in every little detailed piece of those leaves. There are some seed pods there. There are some, um, all the petals of the magnolia, the center of the magnolia. Be sure that you thoroughly cover this in the wax. Y'all, we have reached 16,000 subscribers. 
y'all are amazing for y'all who have been here and who have been following thank you so much you do amazing things with this channel you really do being here and watching and following means so much to me all right now we're going to take the backing once this is dry we're going to lay it down and it is just going to pop back into place so just press it down and it will lock into place but we're going to be doing some things to the inside of this box so we need to be sure that it doesn't move around and that nothing pops out so we're going to go ahead and add some glue just to the corners because at some point in the future I'm all, I may want to use this again and I can recover this with something else just pop the back out and just do something else to it so this will ensure that that happens I'm going to center my little sign right in the middle Isn't that gorgeous y'all I think that's so pretty and although those flowers are not magnolias I think they're gonna work great in this project so I'm just trying to get an idea of where my center would be then I'm gonna add my hot glue and this is Gorilla Glue because this is gonna be you know it's kind of bulky so it's gonna be kind of heavy I don't want it to fall and then I'm gonna add it where it looks like it's centered press it down nicely and then look this is gonna be like an embellishment on the top so that it looks like it's made onto the box I love this I love this so much once I get it in the center you can check with your ruler to just to make sure I'm gonna press it down in place and hold it there to give that chance that a chance for the uh, Gorilla Glue to grip now you're gonna use something like E6000 if you don't use Gorilla Glue look how gorgeous so there are a couple of spots I missed I'm just gonna go back in with a fine brush and get in the little cracks and you can see here the details you can see what I was talking about here I want to get in there now if you do a little too much like I got a little too much there on that leaf just grab a terry cloth of whatever type old wash rag old sock or something that you have and just pat it and it will just go it'll stay down in the cracks and the top will come off so it makes it perfect I'm just reinforcing my shadows and stuff in there and y'all doesn't this look gorgeous I love this so what do you think about magnolias in the fall I think this looked really nice I mean we use other flowers and when they're not in season right so why not magnolias too beautiful we're gonna use a little wood house and a card so just grab any card you see over in Dollar Tree in their card aisle and then these furniture markers also came from Dollar Tree in a three pack so I saw this card at Goodwill and I loved the color and the print it's so cute with all the little birds and the fall leaves and it fits perfectly onto this card there'll be a little excess that's gonna be removed but that's okay I'm just gonna sit it on top kind of get my edges where they need to be and then I'm going to center it where I like it and off to the side is perfect so that made it really easy for me then you can just use your fingers to press down a bit on the angles or and then cut it out with scissors or you can flip it over on your cutting mat I'm just gonna give you some options and trim it out with your blade and your cutting mat be super careful when you use a blade that you are not cutting towards your fingers because these things are sharp I did get this from Dollar Tree I think it was in a three pack y'all over in the automotive or tool section but they see how the blade fits right under the little chimney there all I had was one little piece that was still stuck and it just folded and popped straight off all right now see how nice that is it's almost centered right in the middle of that house I love it so here are the three markers and I'm gonna show you what each color looks like because they're all brown obviously but they all have a little bit different of an undertone so I'll just show you here you can freeze it and zoom in decide which color you like best I've chosen cherry and then I'm just gonna start coloring it in you can use your antiquing wax here if you want to but for those of you who don't have the antiquing wax or a Walmart nearby but you do have a Dollar Tree you can stain things with these um, 
Dollar Tree furniture repair markers. That's what they're actually labeled as, I do believe. And I've used these on lots of projects. I even have fall projects that I use these markers on from last year and probably the year before. So, yes, you can use these markers to do your staining. So there's the roof, the sides, and the back. The front is clean because we don't need to waste our furniture marker on this, do we? We're not going to be looking at this part. We're just going to add some Mod Podge or school glue or whatever type of glue you want to use. I will say that once you put it down though, you need to let it dry before you start sanding off your edges or you will have your project shifting around. So be sure that it is dry. Just walk away, work on another project until it is set in place. I'm just putting a thin layer here of the Mod Podge all over the front and I'm going to place the card down right on top. Then you can press it down with your hands, roll it out if you would like, but you see how it shifts around? You gotta be super careful. Once it's dry, go ahead and get whatever you wanna sand with. I love my sanding block. And start shearing off the edges. Y'all, I am almost at 15,000 subscribers. I got up this morning, I checked it. I have 13 more to go before August 1st to get to my goal of 15,000 subscribers. I'm so excited. Thank you for all of you who have subscribed. There is going to be a giveaway, so be sure that you have your notification bell clicked when you are subscribed so that you do not miss out anything. Be sure that you check in the community tab um, as often as possible because sometimes I do my giveaways through there. And you don't wanna miss out. Okay, so I went back over my lighter edges with the marker. And then I'm gonna use the same technique we used on the tags to go over the house to give it a more of a rustic look. More aged, more homey, whatever you wanna call it. Distressed can be called many different things. I'm just gonna go over all of the little white edges. I'm gonna pull it a little more toward the front. You can see here how it kind of fades inward. I love that look, love it. And then you can also just take your finger and if your background is like a stark white and you don't care for that, just go ahead and take your finger and drag it all the way across lightly like this and it'll take that brightness out. of. This piece of wood was destined for the garbage pile. It was actually next to the burn pile and I pulled it away from the tree so I could bring it in and use it and apparently not my table over in the process. So this is what it looks like. It's kind of dirty, scuffed up. I went ahead and wrote down 57 inches so you'll know how long this is. I didn't trim it down. It's exactly as it is when I pulled it. I'm going to use some walnut wood tint. This does not have any smell at all. It doesn't stink. It doesn't stain. It's great. Well, it stains your wood projects, but you know. So I took it outside and used my sander on it, my electric sander, and then brought it back in, wiped it off, get all the little dust off, and then now I'm just taking an old terry cloth rag here. You know, you can keep your old towels and just tear them into shreds, and they're really good for staining and cleaning your craft projects. You save a little money that way. So you can just go ahead and put as much as you need, as much as you like for whatever coverage that you desire. You might could use antiquing wax, but I'm not entirely sure because things don't like to stick to it very well. So I've gone over to my Cricut and I'm cutting out the letters for the word harvest. I've already measured everything. This is not like a Cricut tutorial video, just letting you know. I'm not a pro, so I'm not gonna give you a step-by-step -step on a Cricut, but there are plenty of crafters who know exactly what they're doing. You probably wanna go to them for those tutorials. Moving along, I am going to remove or weed all of the extras off. And you see the little pick in my hand that actually comes from Dollar Tree, and I really like it. So, I am going to, now that it's all weeded, I'm going to take a piece of contact paper that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to lay this on top, and I am going to use this to lift my letter off without tearing my letters. So I am transferring it. This is like a transfer tape, if you will. I'm gonna place it down here on the wood and I'm not gonna press it all the way down yet. I'm gonna measure and see how far down it is. If it's where I like it. And that's what you see me doing here. And then I'm gonna move it down just a little cause I need a little space on the top for extra embellishing. 
and I'm just measuring here on the sides as well so that it is centered. And then once it is, I can press it down with my hands and then get some type of a tool and or squeegee and then go ahead and press this down into place. This vinyl that I'm using, I thrifted it. It is awful. It is awful for vinyl projects, but it is great for stenciling because it peels up very easily. Ta-da! My first one. Okay, so now here it is. With all of the letters in place, I've used about, there's like an inch of space in between each letter there. So I have a nice gap. Then I'm gonna take some of my plaster chalk paint and go over the top. I'm lightly going over the letters so that I don't go under because I didn't seal. And then I'm gonna go heavier over after that. Then you can just peel off. You can see how that was tearing. And then this is what it looks like and I love it. Love it, love that dark wood showing underneath. Okay, so you can get these packs of little wooden cutouts from Dollar Tree, um, Harvest DIY Words. Very good value because there's six in there. And you can use these to embellish your projects. I'm gonna use this on the top of my sign. And I'm just going to stain it with the same stain. Like the, oh, look what I did. Oh, it's so frustrating. They are so fragile, y'all. But look, I'm just going to keep going. I'm rolling with it. Just keep on going because we can fix it. We can fix it. Oh! Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit of my wood glue here. And I'm going to be gluing this down. I've already glued down the two Fs. And I'm going to glue down the rest of the word right next to it so that it is exactly where I want it to be. Wiping off my extra wood glue. So simple. A lot of steps, but easy. So this is a spaghetti sauce jar. It has been put through the dishwasher and all the sticky has come off. And I have some candle tops. I have some berry garland. I also have some moss, some foam, etc., etc. I'm gonna start by trimming off a little bit of foam to fit in the lid. Be sure that you put it right in the center so that you do not, it doesn't get in the way when you put the jar back down because we will be putting the jar back down. You're going to glue some moss on here. You can use reindeer moss if that's something that you prefer. And we're going to take that berry garland and turn it into a little tree. Yeah, a little fall tree. So to, mo to make that stem a little bit sturdier, we're going to fold it up on itself, twist it, and then just kind of pinch it together so it's skinny. Then you're going to cut off different lengths of that same berry vine and then start twisting them together at different heights on that what we're going to call our trunk the longest branch we're going to call that our trunk you're going to start adding on in the shape of a tree this is going to kind of symbolize a fall tree so if you didn't look at those as berries you could imagine that those might be fall leaves right because they're a dark red and an orange so you can cut them at different places. I like to cut right above where the little berries come out because then you don't have a stick poking out on the top. What is actually the tip of it will be where the leaves would be if those berries were leaves. So I'm going to wrap around here and just pinch it together with the little pliers whenever I need to to keep it in place. Our tree will not be flat. It's gonna kind of look that way for a minute, but then once we get it all um, as thick as we want it, as many branches as we want it, we will pull it out a little bit and twist the little branches in the ways that we like them. And then it will be ready to go into our jar. So now I can take that sturdy branch that we made and press it down into that foam underneath. And this is our little tree. It is not too wide and it will easily fit up into our jar because we checked it, we know it's the right height. So I'm gonna press down, tighten it up, and just trim off the little pieces that are on the outside. This is the easiest way I've found to do it. And now we're going to embellish the bottom so that it doesn't look like a jar sitting on a piece of wood. So we're gonna take some jute, we're gonna tie it, or you can start it off by just gluing it down, but I just tied it this time for whatever reason. And then you can just start twisting and gluing because there is a prego label, prego, prego, whatever you want to call it, spaghetti sauce label, 
cut into the glass or raised up off the glass and we want to cover that up so you can twist going upward and just add dots of glue where you need it and this is going to cover up that piece I would love it if you would subscribe and become part of the family here we have a good time we're very social in the comments and very supportive all right, so you see how it looks. I've shown you here how it looks when you go all the way down to the jar. Now to put the top and bottom on the jar, we're gonna use some whatever type of glue you like. I've got some um, super glue gel stuff that comes from Dollar Tree. Fix All, I think is what it's called. And then some hot glue, and we're gonna center it over that lid on the bottom. So that's gonna be our base. And then the smaller lid, we're gonna use the same glue process as before and we're going to put it on the raised areas now because the bottom some of them have like a, a little indention you're going to put the top on and then you can use like a bead or a knob or a little pine cone or some type of embellishment on the top i just have a piece of a chest set that i got from the thrift store just use some hot glue and put that one down we're not going to be lifting it by that little piece so no worries about that I'm gonna wrap a little bit around this lip just because I think it looks better. Uh, you know, with the bottom, it looks more finished, I think. I'm gonna trim that off. And then I've got some bows that were destined for the garbage can that came off of other projects. Saved them. And I'm gonna recycle them and reuse them on the base of this cute little piece. Isn't that sweet? That's cute, y'all. And now you can just dovetail your ends or cut them at a slant or whatever you want to do there. You could also just make a jute bow or you can make a bigger bow to go on there or you could put your bow on the top. But here's our little tree in a jar. Isn't it cute? Almost like a little fall terrarium. Click the subscribe button for more budget-friendly inspiration. I'd appreciate it if you did enjoy the video to like it and share it. Okay, so I thrifted this fan. Now I've seen these before. These have been around probably since the 70s. I know this is not a new piece. This is something that's been around a while, right? Okay, so I'm gonna do something to this to give it more of a rustic look because that's the kind of look I like. I'm just gonna go into my antiquing wax with a chippy brush and I'm going to dip into there. I'm gonna offload some of that. And then I'm going to use this and brush it all over this fan. This is like a, I don't know if you would call it cane or what, but it's soft. Maybe straw, maybe straw. Very, very lightweight. And I'm going to go all over it, just slowly building up the coverage. I have had it for a while now, thinking I might do something farmhouse with it. But I'm thinking something rustic fall would be nice. And it's definitely going to have more of a, it's still going to have that boho vibe. I think um, I'm going to be using some colors that I don't normally use in the fall. It's still beautiful though. Okay, so if you get a little too much of that wax in one area, just take a towel and wipe it off. Look at that. That's all you have to do. Because it's wax and it takes a little while to dry. Yes. So we're gonna put it upside down because this is how we're gonna hang it. And I'm gonna take a little piece of foam. I will cut it into a smaller rectangle. And then I'll take a piece of floor wire. We're gonna use about, it's gonna be about nine inches of it. It's how much I use here. And I'm going to cut that down. Lay it where we want the greeny me picks to be. And then I'm gonna thread it through the back. Well, through the front into the back. And pull that piece up and then go over the top of it and go right toward the bottom of it. Y'all, I'm getting notifications. It is my sister and niece and daughter. They're all excited about something. So if you hear that, just forgive them. We just have a real good relationship and 
and we get chatty sometimes. All right, so now that we have it on the back and we've wound it tight, we're gonna cover it so it doesn't scratch our wall or our door, and I'm just gonna use a little bit of glue and a piece of ribbon to hold that in place to keep our surfaces protected. Now we're ready for the fun part. Okay, so you're gonna grab whatever type of greenery and florals you like, and I absolutely love this piece. There's some purple in here. I thrifted this, so I'm not really, I'm not entirely sure where it came from, but it's really, it's different. And, you know, I'm always encouraging y'all to think outside the box. So I'm gonna have to take that lesson for myself, right? Just kind of get out there and try some different things. And I think that this kind of leans nicely toward Halloween. If you like to have Halloween that, um, you know, like the purples and greens and things like that for Halloween. So just a little idea if you like following. I'm gonna take that pick and put it right up in the bottom. There are about four leaves on each one of these little picks. And I'm going to cut them down into manageable lengths so they don't pierce all the way through and out the other side. And I'll just put these in the foam. Now add a little hot glue to the end of the pick before you put it in if you would like to do that to keep it in place. This will not be outside, but if you do decide to put something like this outside, you're going to need some Gorilla Glue for that. Y'all, I can tell school's back in. Oof. Okay. Now, we're going to continue along. I was going to use some hydrangeas that match. Oh, they had the purple and beige. But for some reason, I was feeling like I needed something a little more wildflowery looking to get that boho cottage core rustic look. So, I decided to change over to these asters. And then I have a couple of other flowers, too. And these all came from Dollar Tree. The other pick that I cut down with the yellow or the cream color flowers, it didn't have a, uh, a label on it anymore, so I'm not entirely sure what those flowers are. But if you know what they are when you see me put them in, feel free to put it in the comments for those who need a little help trying to find their, their pieces at Dollar Tree. Okay. And y'all remember, it's very early in the season. As crafters, we have to put our things out so that you have a chance to see what you need to buy and what you want to do so you can plan your decor for the season. Um, that's why we do that so early so you know if you don't have these things in your store yet go through your stash from last year that's mainly what i'm using so just get the stuff from last year and you know give it a shot now you could have stopped at that point if you like more of a minimal look but you know i'm not gonna stop at that point so i'm gonna add two more picks so there are two picks in the top to the right and left two picks to the bottom right and left and one right in the center okay when I put the flowers in here, I'm going to make sure that I have those asters twisted because those petals come in two layers. And if you twist them with your fingers, it will push those layers apart and give you a, a broader flower. It'll just look like a nicer flower. So if you decide that you want to add some more little pieces in here, but you don't want to put a huge piece because perhaps you only have one pick left and you have to divide it, or you have a smaller space, then you can just go ahead and wrap these up on the bottom with a piece of floral wire and make picks of two and trim it off and be careful here with these wires too because if you get a really thin gauge wire you can poke your finger easily so just be mindful and watch those fingers okay so i'll just do the same thing with the other one make a little pick and then with a little hot glue on the end you can put them right in place easy easy little tip for you Now, here's another point where you could stop, fluff out your arrangement and leave it at that. Or you can add some little flyaways. Now also, if you have a leaf that's flipped over and you just can't get it to behave, just add a little glue. That's all you have to do and it'll stay there. I'm gonna pull some more of these little pieces out that look similar to what we used in the little village. I'm gonna pull those out and add three of those in. One to the left, one to the right, and then one will be in the middle. And then that will fill out this little piece. And complete that project. And then you can just hang it by the loop on top. We're gonna use some sheepskin chalk paint. Some antiquing wax. Chippy brush, a regular brush. Then we're going to use some any type of a wall decor decal from Dollar Tree. 
I'm going to use a thrifted sign that I found. This one happens to have some beading on it, and I think it's really pretty, but I want to make the wood darker. I am over all of the pale, colorless, light wood. I need something moody and rich and beautiful. So I'm going to change it. I love using antiquing wax for that, and there are also a variety of stains and wood tints that you can use. You can also use just a stain, or a, rather a paint, that you water down and use that as a stain. Certainly any of those things would work. Now all I'm doing here is just adding down a little bit of painter's tape to make sure that I don't get wax all over this part of the picture because I will be putting some chalk paint on here and I don't want the wax to interfere with the bonding of the paint to the surface underneath. So I'm just gonna take my little knife here and I am going to cut along those edges and get a nice crisp edge. And then I'll start adding this and layering this on. Okay, now I like to build up. I know I want a fuller coverage than I normally do, but I don't want anything dripping and making a huge mess. If I start off light, it is also easier and quicker to dry. So I'm just going to go over it and making sure that I get the beads or the half beads that are on the inside. That's a really pretty detail. So I'm gonna go over those two and then all along the inside edge and the outside edge as well. Really get this good and covered and then dried. Now I got an, I'm gonna take off all of this edging here. And you can see that I did go over in a few spots. And this wax is still damp. It's not, you know, completely dry yet. But you see how easy you can clean that up? This is just a baby wipe. It's not even an alcohol wipe. I'm using my fingernail to press down and go right in the edge there. It's not gonna hurt the wax because I'm not touching the wax. And then after I've taken all the wax off, I am going to use my new tool. This is my Wagner heat tool. And this thing is hot. I'm telling you right now, this thing is a booger. It will have something smoking. You got to keep it moving and hold it way back. All right, so once it's dry, I'm going to go in with my sheepskin paint and I'm going to go all over my image on the inside. By the way, this is not a sponsored video. I just wanted to show y'all because I had asked about the, you know, if anybody knew of a good one. And my husband went and picked one for me and it happened to be the Wagner. So I am very satisfied with it so far. Yeah, so thank you for that for those of you who recommended it. All right, so I'm going to grab the Be Thankful sign. Why? Because I am a very thankful girl. That's why. I'm very thankful for all of you who are taking the time to come to my channel and check out what I'm doing over here and to give me s some courage, you know, to, to be who I am and to uh, keep me going. And I appreciate all the positivity. And if y'all notice, I've tried to keep it very positive in the comments. I unfortunately had to delete a few things, uh, but you know, that's for all of our benefit. And that's going to happen. But, you know, we don't have to respond when things get ugly, do we? No, we do not. We can just delete and move on. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to focus my energy on positive things and on all of you who are here because you want to be here. So thank you for that. I'm thankful for you. So if you like a minimal look, go ahead and leave it just like that. If not, you can do some embellishment like I'm going to. So this is a pic that came from Do Believe Michaels. I did not get it from Michaels, I thrifted it. Lucky me, right? I love these. Um, the pick is a little different and this is actually oak. I do believe this is oak leaf, which is different than what we usually get, which is maple leaf. So, I was glad to have something a little bit different and I love the richness of the brown and the orange and the yellow in here. Very pretty. Now, I knew when I did this, this was not going to be a symmetrical look. I'm not going for that. I want to do something that's a little different because why? Because I want to make it my own, right? I'm going to use my staple gun and I put these stems right in the tracks and I'm going to just staple right across them. We're using antiquing wax as a color and sometimes the glue does not want to stick to the antiquing wax. So the staples are going to help ensure that nothing slides out of its place. Okay, so I'm going to take the third pick 
and this is where it's definitely going to be asymmetrical. I'm going to have more weight to start with off to the bottom left. I'm going to just push it through one of the staples that didn't go all the way through. You can add a little more glue to that. Then I'm going to add this one little random pick that I had. I'm not even sure. It just fell out of the rest of the picks that I thrifted. So we're just going to use it because I like it. All right, then I'm going to take my little sunflowers and I'm going to, these are felt sunflowers and they came in a pack on clearance from Hobby Lobby uh, last year. And I'm going to add a little wood blocks to get them up off. I don't want to lay them flat down. I want them to be raised a little bit above the arrangement. So I want to use these little blocks that will hold them up a little bit. They don't have stems, so we can't do it that way. And this works as an option to give you some elevation. So we'll have a total of three of these on the bottom. Just like that. Hold them in place, make sure nothing falls off, and then you can arrange your greenery around it or your leaves around it. I wanna add well, some little flyaways in here. So, and by the way, flyaways, that term I got from Ramon at home. He uses that term and um, I used to watch his channel all the time, but now I have a grandbaby, so I watch babies now. I'm going to add some hot glue and add these pieces in. Again, not symmetrical. I did not intend for it to be. But you can make yours that way if you'd like. Always fluffing bows and flowers and leaves, aren't I? Always. Okay, now I've decided that I want to add two more of these sunflowers, just one in each corner here, where it kind of overlaps onto the white because it seemed like a lot of empty space up there. Definitely, if you don't like this, you don't have to do it this way. I think it looks nice. We're gonna flip this over and add a hanger on the back. And this is me just checking out where I need to put my hanger, y'all. Excuse that. I'm gonna grab my wire go right through there and then I'll twist it. I'll go to the other side and twist it as well and then we will have a hanger. Nice little hanger for the sign. And this is easy to do but you can use whatever type of a hanger you want. And So on a recent vlog that I did, or a recent video, I went to Hobby Lobby and saw a cotton and burlap little arrangement that they made, but it was like $16.99. You'll have to go back if you want to see it and watch that last video that I did. And I said I could dupe that, and so it was requested that I do that. So I'm going to show you what you're going to do, and you can use, um, you can use Dollar Tree supplies for this. So I'm going to take a styrofoam ball, put it in any jar that you want from Dollar Tree. You won't be able to see it, so it doesn't really matter what it looks like. I'm going to take some scraps of burlap. I had a little, a little um, bundle of it, and I just cut it in two pieces the same size. I'm going to cut these stems down, and I'm going to cut one about an inch longer than the rest of them. So here's this roll, and this is what I was saying about cutting this into pieces. You see how this burlap fits up to the sides? That's what you want. So choose your jar that is going to fit whatever piece of burlap or fabric that you're going to use to cover your jar. So I'm just doing that here. I'm going to lay this one on top and use the underside, the one on the bottom, as a guide and just cut that one the same length. Now we're going to take these pieces and turn it so that it makes like a T or a plus sign, just like this, you can see. And then the little 
jar will go right in the middle. You're going to use some burlap string, or some jute, rather. And I'm going to cut a couple of pieces. I'm going to use these to hold this onto the jar so we don't have to glue this, thank goodness, because we would be burning our fingers. So I'm just going to bundle this up around the top, almost like you would gather up a ponytail. So you're just going to gather it up. I'm going to take a piece of that jute and we're going to go around where the lid goes on the jar. But we're not using the lid, but in that section, that's where we're going to put it. That's going to be where we cinch it. You're just going to wrap that jute around there and do it tightly, as tightly as you can. Hold your fingers on that knot, just like I'm holding that here. I'm trying to hold it so it won't slip. Sometimes it's a struggle. Try to keep it tight, and then we're going to make a double knot in it. I left all this in here so you could see that I'm not perfect. We crafters are not perfect, but I got it on there. Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of pull it around so that I have it evenly spaced and that the jar is completely covered. And to make sure that none of that fabric is underneath, um, has slipped below where I've tied it. So I'm going to take the other piece, wrap it around, grab that piece of jute, and we're going to do the same process. You're going to go right over where the lip of that jar is, or the top of the jar, whichever way you want to call it, where you screw the lid on. You're going to go down and tie it in a double knot or triple knot, whatever makes you happy. I'm keeping my thumb in place. Now, nice and tight. So once I have it good and tight, I'm going to just pull this up because my burlap had slipped beneath it. So I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to just kind of slide it around a little bit so that it, it gives the appearance that I like. Then you got all this stuff on here. You can just pull off your little unraveled pieces or you can leave them on if you like that look. You can trim this down if you like, but I like the idea of having it long because it looks like a bag to me, like a burlap sack. And that's kind of the idea. So for more security, I'm just going to wrap it around the back since I had this long piece of, of string and I'm just going to tie it in a double knot. Now everything is nice and secure. I can trim that off. Now we can start putting in the cotton stems. So I'm going to start off with my tallest stem and it's going to go kind of in the middle. You can see how that's going to look. It's going to be about level with the top of my little pieces of burlap. And then at an angle to the side, I'm going to put the next stem, which is shorter. You can see the angle. And then on the back side, we're kind of making a triangle. We're going to do it this way. Now, obviously, if it's going to be against a wall, you want all your pods to be facing outward. But if it's going to be in the center of something, you can kind of put them at uh, different angles where they're all facing outward. So I've trimmed off a little bit of that string. I'm gonna go back and take about two and a half feet in three strips of my jute. I wanna have enough that I can wrap around here and make a bow. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go above it now because I want that fabric like on, um, I think it was in the Hobby Lobby video. It's a little bit closer to the pods, I do believe. So all I'm doing is going up above it. This is above where the jar is. I'm going to tie it. I'm not going to tie it too tight. I don't want it to be too thin. And then I'm just going to make a really simple bow here. And fluff out all of my pieces of strings. Just kind of separate them. And fix the tails. And that's how that looks. Now this was easy. I had these pods from last year, so they were only a dollar. The jar was a dollar. I've had it since last year. I already had the burlap and I already had the string. So that is a much better cost effective piece. If you ask me, what do you think? Now this one is just too easy. So I've got this can, it's a leftover can from some seeds. And this is a placemat that I thrifted that has sticks in it. Now you could probably get sticks out of your yard. You can get sticks from wherever. But just get a bunch of sticks that are bigger than your can. That's what you want to do. 
So if your can's three inches, maybe try some five inch stick pieces. You can even get them in a park on the side of the road. I'm gonna take some scrap burlap. This happens to be ribbon, but it doesn't have to be ribbon. And I'm gonna trim it down so that it is the little bit, just a little bit shorter than the sides of the can. And that way I can wrap it around the can without it hanging over on the top or the bottom. I'm gonna start on the seam and just put it down. Mine was already cut at a slant. That, you don't have to do that, but it was already that way, so I'm, I'm just gonna go with it. And then protect your fingers here if you're using hot temperature glue. And then continue around. And by the way, just because you have neuropathy or a little feeling in your fingers, does not mean that you should not protect your fingers. You can still have damage and burns, and we don't want that to happen, right? We don't want to make the problems worse, so please protect yourself. I'm going to continue around on the top, because you don't have to do the top and the bottom. You can, you can just do the top, and it'll stay there perfectly for you. And you can trim off whatever you don't need and glue it down. Now that we have our base, we have something to securely glue our sticks onto. So I'm going to take my Gorilla Glue this time, and my glue gun, and I'm going to start fitting which sticks I think are gonna be the best on here. They are not all perfectly straight, and I am totally fine with that. I know I use that term a lot, but it's really true. I don't sweat that small stuff. I like things being different. I like things being unique. I like to make things my own. That's why that's the channel name. You know, I like to make it my own. So. I just encourage you to, if you don't like what I'm doing, you don't have to watch for one thing, but if you don't like it, you can just make it your own. You can just do what you like. You know, maybe you don't like using these natural sticks, so maybe you want to use popsicle sticks. I don't know. Whatever you think and you want to do is completely fine. So I'm just going to continue to add these around and add a little in the middle if it needs it. And going around and around. Look at all the different shapes and textures in the wood. I love that. Yes, I think it's perfect for fall. Definitely. So, now to embellish it, you can use some of this gorgeous ribbon from Dollar Tree. Or you can use, this is from Amazon actually. But they do have pieces of little trim that you can get. I want mine to slightly overlap. I know I'm out of range here, but slightly overlap where the can top is so that you don't see that top. And then I'm just going to glue it down. I'm just going to use my hot glue. I've got one side glued down already. And then I'm going to add a little bit of glue and put this next piece down. Then you can just trim it off at a slant, at, a, at an angle, square, however you want to do it. And so this is how it will look. Time consuming, yes, but it's easy to do. Then whatever picks you like to put in the top, go ahead and put them in. These are thrifted. You can see it has stuff on it. I'm just going to bend those branches and stick it in the top. Love it. And that is a fall looking floral. I like it. I think it'll work very nicely with my rustic cottage decor. With just a splash of gold. I love this. It's so cute. Ugh. So you're going to take one of these light bulb terrariums from Dollar Tree. I got mine early this summer, but they should still be there. Some pumpkin chalk paint. I'm going to use some of this, I believe this is petal blossom petal, petal blossom something, spray paint. This is a little thrifted mushroom, but you can get little mushrooms at Dollar Tree. Some oak leaves from Dollar Tree. I'm not going to use the ribbon back there. And I'm going to use this rub-on transfer sheet from the Dollar Tree. I'm also going to use a string of lights, but you'll see that later. Okay, so we're going to start by taking the lid off. little tip for you when you are spray painting, use a bucket of rocks, a little dowel of whatever length you like, and then stick that on there. Now when you take it outside, you can get to all sides without touching it. All right, one good coat of paint. This is just going to make that chalk paint stick better to that plastic surface. So once it is completely dry... We still don't have our little screw on top. We left that off. Here's the tag for you. I'm going to start taking that chalk paint, and I'm going to start putting it down on, the pump, on this pumpkin. Or, well, it's not a pumpkin. It's going to be a gourd, but it's actually a light bulb at this point. I'm going to go side to side with my paint 
all the way around and up to the top just past the little area that screws on so we don't have any gaps where there's no coverage. I used two coats of paint to get the coverage that you will see here. Tried to use my little heat gun. I should have known better and I got a little dimple. You can see it underneath there. All right, I'm gonna take my Mod Podge and I'm gonna go all over here. Don't worry about the little dimple. Do not use heat on the plastic or it's gonna curl under. I knew that before I did it, but I thought if I kept my distance and kept it on low, it would be okay. Don't do that. Use a fan or just be patient. Now I'm gonna take this in the same method. I'm just going back and forth with the brush strokes. And then once it is dry, this is how it's gonna look. And to me, that looks more like a gourd. It has a little bit of a satin finish and I'm totally okay with that. See there, don't worry about that. We're gonna fix it. You know, I always fix my boo-boos because I wanna show you how to fix it in case you have a boo-boo. So this is cork lights, but you can get whatever lights you have at Dollar Tree. And then I'm gonna add these little ribbons to it. These are gonna be like a leaf bottom, I guess you could say, or a mossy look, a mossy bottom maybe. I'm gonna just cut these in sections. I'm not gonna cut them completely square. And I'm gonna stack them two pieces of each color just like that and I'm going to make a little circle out of a cardboard scrap because this is going to be how we glue those pieces of ribbon down. You will burn the fire out of yourself if you put this, try to do this without using a base and I don't want that for you. I want you to be able to keep on happily crafting with no boo-boos. So you're just going to stack these on, protect your fingers and I'm just using my silicone tip finger to press it all down into the glue. Then you can just go around and trim it up if you want to. Kind of make it into a circle because it's gonna sit into the bottom and then the sides are gonna kind of fold up the bottom. It's hard to show you this because it's inside, but you'll, I think you'll get the idea. Kind of fold it and then let it just pop back out in there. You see how it goes up the sides just a little? That's the look I was going for. So now you can just go ahead and add a little bit of hot glue. You wanna use this on your cool setting and then go ahead and put in your base. Now that's all in the bottom so we have something to work with. Easy enough, right? Easy enough. We're gonna let that dry and then we need to address the dent in the opening here. Doesn't this look like a gourd to you? I think it looks just like a gourd. I'm gonna take some of this trim. Now you can get these trims at Dollar Tree. They have like three on a, um, in one package and you can get them where the florals and things are uh, in my store anyway they put them all over the place maybe on an end cap I'm just gonna seal the bottom by adding a little bit of glue I'm just showing you that it's on low, t low temp I don't want to melt this any further than it already has been and I'm just going to start using this my braided piece mine came from the thrift store but you use whatever you can find and you're just gonna follow your curve around the opening here easy enough. I'm trying to get it as close as I can, not necessarily overlapping it, although that might have been a better idea. Um, so you do what you feel like you need to do here. And then with my thumb on the inside and my fingers on the outside, I'm just kind of squeezing that down to the, we're going to call it our gourd. Is at this point, it's a gourd. Keep going around here, adding the glue and squeezing it into place. And then when you get back to the original spot, whether you have a dent or not, go ahead and trim that off so that it meets. I'm using my bullnose pliers. I've had people asking me what tool that is. I was told these are bullnose pliers. I think I linked some in my Amazon store, so check my Amazon link and um, you might be able to find some there. If not, I'll be glad to help you try to find some. Okay, so this is about seven and a half inches, just a scrap that I had left on the paper. And I'm just gonna go with the fold here. And already looked like it had a dent there, so we're gonna make a bow just like that. Simple, simple. No tying because this is regular. I mean, you know, you you're gonna be tying with the the jute here, but no tying the ribbon on pawn itself. That's I think what I'm trying to get at because it's really thick and it would be hard to get a knot in a bow this size. So we're just gonna use our jute to do that, and it's practically the same color, so you know it blends in nicely. 
I'm going to put a couple of knots in here so that it doesn't slip loose. And then we can just trim it off. Then you can pull the tails down and you can push those little loops right into position whichever way you want them. You can flip these up or you can flip them down and you can turn this over whichever way you want to do it. You can seal your edges. So I'm going to take my sheet here, my transfer sheet, and I'm going to choose which one of these um, beautiful embellishments I like. And I'm going to start off with these. And I don't know what kind of leaves these are here. Are these grapevine leaves? I'm not entirely sure. And they have little berries. So I'm just going to cut them off while they're still on the backing because I, they will stick to your fingers. So and then you're going to mess your print up. So be sure that you don't touch on there unnecessarily on the colored parts. Keep your fingers on the clear part. I'm going to hold it in place with my finger. And because this is a round, weird shape here, I'm just going to cut some notches up to the colored parts of this transfer. Just going to cut notches. That way it can lay down smoothly while I press it into place. Now I'm going to show you a couple of options. This is my Mod Podge little squeegee, I guess you could call it. You can use something like this to press it down. You can use a popsicle stick to press it down. And in a little while I'll be using something kind of unpredictable. But you never know what you have on hand, right? So I want to help you out so there's no excuse for not crafting. Okay, so once I get all those edges pressed down, I can carefully move my finger and the film, and there you go. And in the lighter colored leaf, there's a little crack, but that's okay. I'm not worried about that. All right, so now I'm excited. I'm feeling pretty confident. I'm going to go on to my next one. And I like this one with the little pumpkins in it. And I'm going to put it on the side. So before you decide, go ahead and cut some little slits in it and don't place it down until you are sure where you're going to put it because sometimes it will still stick on its own. These are really nice rub-ons in my opinion. So this is a clothespin, you know, the type with a little round top and the little, oh, there is completely wood. But look, you can use it and it works great because it's got a small um, surface area on the end and it really works nice to press these down and then when you get ready to press if you got to press hard put your thumb on the inside and support that under surface then you can flip that clothes pin around whatever you want to call it and you can use the round part also so see there no excuses y'all got a craft no excuses so pretty I love this particular um, sheet of rub-ons, all of the rub-ons from last year, um, three of them, they're all gorgeous. They're really, really pretty. So you can just use whichever ones you like. So again, pressing it down. If you need to trim it or cut little pieces out of it so that it lays flat for you, go ahead and do that. And you can put your embellishments wherever you want on your gourd. I just like it kind of around the opening here. I think it's really pretty. Brings attention and you know, everything to the front. And I like that. So now they are all stuck down there. Very pretty. We're going to work on some florals, a little floral piece here. I like the green on the flowers. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut some of those green leaves on and add them because there's some green in the other pieces of what we got going on in this gourd. And I want to go ahead and let that stay there. Again, I live in Southern Alabama, so we have green all year round all year round we do have some fall colors too but you know if we're going to be realistic there are places in the world that still have green in the fall so do whatever feels right to you i'm going to start making a little swag here i'm just going to alternate really no particular color idea here um, i want it to match what's going on already with what we've already used but no real pattern. I'm just kind of going back and forth, the bigger leaves on the bottom, the smaller ones on the top, so that you can see a representation of each color. And then on the back, I'm just gonna add one more green leaf like toward the bottom. Once that glue has dried, you can take something to poke a hole right through it. You could use a hole punch, you can use whatever you have, but I'm just using one of these little wood carving tools from Dollar Tree. And then just make a hole and then I'm gonna feed 
my flower right through it. Now I bent the stem just like this so that it doesn't stand straight out so that it points forward. And isn't that cute? I like that. So it fits right in the hole on the top. And you can still see the gold. If you want to look at the gold, that's great. If you don't, don't worry about it. It's going to be covered on the back anyway. So now we're going to put our little bow right here in the front, on the side where I made my boo-boo. Nice. All right, the best part. We're going to be working on the inside now. There's so much going on in this project, but you know, take what you want, leave what you don't. I'm going to unwind it, and then I just wrapped it around my hand several times so that I had a bigger area here, but you can have yours pulled completely apart if you want. You're going to take some type of mounting tape. This did come from the Dollar Tree. If you have one of these little cork ones like I have, they're perfect because they fit right in the neck above, you know, the neck of the gourd. We're going to call it our gourd. They fit right up in here, and you can hide them, and you can still turn your lights on and off. Perfect. You can order those from Dollar Tree, I mean, uh, goodness, from Amazon, but you may be able to find something similar enough at Dollar Tree. I don't know. You'll have to check and see. You could always use a flameless tea light in here if you wanted. I'm going to add some of the same colored leaves that we used on the top up there and the bottom off to the side a bit, and this is going to be where we're going to nest down our mushroom. I hope you can get an idea. I hope I'm explaining it well enough because I know it's hard to see the darkness inside of that pumpkin. So then you want to place your mushroom toward the center back of the pumpkin. I actually sat mine down a little bit too close to the front, but that's okay. You know, I can still see it nicely and it looks like a little starry night in there. Isn't it cute? I'm going to turn off the lights in just a second to show you. My son is helping me. And he's got the lights off for me so you can see how it looks. I think it's really cute. So now we're going to seal in and make that, all of those little appliques that we put on, or these little pieces here that we put on, we want to make them blend in and look a little bit richer. And the Mod Podge that we use for the rest of this project is going to be perfect to do that. It does bring out the richness of these little um, rub-on transfers, and it's going to help seal them in place so they almost look like they were hand-painted. And I like that idea. And we're going to do that to each one. It's going to blend in and dry and look so nice. And then if you want to cover up the back and you don't want that showing, you just add a leaf right there. Now it's all covered up. Nice! going to start with some Dollar Tree leather tags. I have some thrifted flowers, so I have this beautiful cream colored hydrangea and some more of these other pretty rust colored flowers. And then I have this pick that I thrifted, but you can definitely use a couple of picks from Dollar Tree. This one is really, really thick, very pretty. And then this is a thrifted broom that I got from Goodwill. All right, so this is 36 inches. We are going to cut this pick down into smaller pieces. So this will kind of give you an idea. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You get about eight little pieces out of here. You would probably need two or three of the Dollar Tree picks to do this. And you can use whatever you like. If you want to use leaves, you can use leaves. You can use grasses or whatever you like. I'm going to cut apart the flower picks. You want to leave a little bit of branch on there or stem on there because we're going to be using it to attach it to the wreath. We're going to start with this grass piece right into the center top of the wreath. Then I'm going to put one on each side. The broom itself is kind of thin and small and that's okay. We're going to beef it up with all this beautiful colored grass. You can even go on the inside and push it up into there. Now because the broom is so tightly packed underneath where you can see the little braid in the top right corner, 
these pieces will stick in here just fine if you're going to use this in the house. So you don't have to glue it down unless you're making it to sell it. And just continue along till you get that as thick and full as you like. And I love this and I love that it extends beyond the, the wooded part of the broom or the little stems of the broom. I love it. And now we're going to move to the upper part of the same little sweeping part of the broom. I'm going to go right above the little, the braid or the, um, you see the line where the thread is. I'm going to go right above it with one of those picks and kind of push it to the side. Now it's on wire, so it makes it easy for you to give a little bend to your pieces. Same thing with the Dollar Tree picks. They're on wire, so you can bend them. And if anything pops off, generally you can just pop it right back on there. So no worries about that. Now I'm gonna put this other one on the left a little bit lower down than the one on the right just to give a little bit of interest. I'm gonna take the stem of this hydrangea and make a hook. Then I'm gonna lay it down on the broom and push it upward. So you can see here how we did that. I have pushed it upward. Now I'm gonna take the leaves and push them up on these flowers so that they can be seen. I'm just adjusting my petals a little bit. If you get a piece from the thrift store and it's kind of wild looking, you can always use a little hot glue to arrange your petals and to make it look um, tighter instead of, you know, opened up so much. Whatever you like. But I love these just the way they are. And I'm just gonna put it on the bottom side and press it upward, just like I did the other one. We're gonna do that with all of the flowers. You're gonna give it a little crook behind the back part and then just arrange your leaves once you get them pushed up. This is not symmetrical and there's no certain pattern to this. I love these colors. I knew I had to use the broom when I saw these beautiful colored flowers. They're so nice. And then the little bud, I'll put it right to the side. Sometimes you have to move it around a little bit um, to make sure that you get it in a tight part of the broom. You don't want anything falling out. So now I'm gonna add just a little tag here and I got out of camera range, I apologize. Y'all know my process. But I'm just adding hot glue and I'm just gonna put it down on the base of the broom and then push the little string part, the leather string part just up on the inside where you can't see it. You can cut it off if you want or use it for another project. And this is how this little beauty looks. Love this, this will not be taken apart. This is gonna be put right in my house. Perfect piece of fall decor, I think. Here is this one hanging up. You can put this on your door, you can put it on a wall, whatever you like. Beautiful. If you wanna put it outside your door, just use a little bit of Gorilla Hot Glue to make sure that all your pieces stay in place. And you can do that just by putting it on the end of each pick before you put it into the broom. Do you like this one? I hope y'all have seen my other broom swag projects. Love them. And I will be doing more for more holidays. And gals. So I've got some wheat picks here, some sunflowers, some extras and some of these beautiful picks from Walmart. My sister gave me these, and I got a bunch of different bundles. Uh, if you can see down there, I have a wooden box, and I have placed down some of those um, little floaties, those pool noodles. Now I'm gonna cut off my little leaves from my stems, and then I'm gonna start placing them down. When you cut these off, be sure you leave them long if you're going to be putting them in a box because you want to make sure they're tall enough to stand up above the edge of the box. I am just going to be poking these down here and there. If you have your greenery with kind of bendy, floppy stems, just put your hand toward the bottom and help guide it into that pool noodle and it'll stay down in there. Sometimes you get ready to push it and it crumples up, so just, you know, be patient. It will work. This is a very affordable way to have floral foam. And by the way, this is not my idea. Other people do this as well. But I thought it was a good idea, so I wanted to give it a shot. And I'm happy with it. So I'll go from corner to corner, edge to edge, north, south, south, east, west, 
some are standing some are bent out toward the sides and I want my leaves to be sort of facing upward so you can see here what I've done and I've left all that in there so you can see exactly what I'm doing I don't want any gaps in there you could always cover those noodles with um, you know well you could get if you're using foliage that happens to be orange you could always get an orange pool noodle because Dollar Tree sells them pretty much all year now in all kinds of different colors but you could also put Spanish moss or something on there to cover it up or if you do like me and you put a whole lot in that box make it look nice and lush then you're really not going to see into it anyway now we're going to move on and I am going to be putting down my beautiful white sunflowers use any colors you like this is more of a neut neutral type of arrangement here right now uh, where I live in southern Alabama we are getting leaves on the ground finally you can sit on the porch the weather is nice um, it's a little dry we haven't had any rain but after all the rain we got this summer I'm I'm okay with it with some crispy grass and not lots of uh, crunchy leaves under my feet after I've got my floor four flowers in there oh I'm getting tongue twisted today put your other greenery in there and I chose this greenery because it does have like a fallish kind of look kind of um, olive greens in it it's not bright green so it looks like maybe some things that are turning for the fall I think it's a pretty look what do you think about that now you can still see down there to the foam but let's not worry about that because look at this these picks I got these at the thrift store but you can get um, these wheat picks at Dollar Tree and you're just gonna poke those down in there and spread them out a little bit and they're really gonna take up some room and really make this look I don't know just that wheat just says Thanksgiving to me it just says harvest and Thanksgiving so if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving maybe you do something like a Friendsgiving or you celebrate a harvest meal with your family whatever you want to call it in any way you could use this if you don't celebrate any of that this could just simply be some decoration for you to use for fall and autumn and the box that I got a beautiful rich wooden box I got from the thrift store you can use anything you have for this see that wasn't hard at all was it nope Not too bad. I've got some thrifted greenery and I also have some greenery from Timu. These sunflowers came from Timu. These are some table scatter pieces or like a potpourri set thing. I've got all kinds of extra thrifted greenery and ferns and these look a little fallish. They got little tips are brown. We're going to use foam and some green grass mat. And we're going to use these are the three little baskets that I got from the the, uh, the thrift store from the goodwill bins we're also going to need little a little pick to stand with some more table scatter of whatever sort you want to use it's just going to be a big variety of stuff and then these beautiful flower fairy pieces that i got from Timu. not sponsored i have to say that every time i use the stuff that is not sponsored so here are an example of some of the beautiful little pieces these are just like a vinyl type thing or pvc type stuff but they don't have any adhesive on them at all so you can really use them for a bunch of different things i'm going to pick three of these little beautiful fairies to be featured in this video and these are the three that i'm going to choose because they look mostly like fall to me we're going to cut down foam of whatever type that you have you can use thrifted foam you can use Dollar Tree foam you can use foam out of a box of stuff that you get from a store it doesn't matter I'm gonna fill in that bottom we want to bring it up to level 
are almost level. And then we're going to use a variety of different base coverings. So we'll use moss on some and we'll use some of this um, moss mat, I guess is what it's called. You can use AstroTurf, that greenish type of stuff, whatever you choose to use. And then there's also moss in a variety of colors. And you could certainly use Spanish moss here if you wanted to. But I like that, you know, we're going into fall. It is not completely fall. Um, with these this decor it is definitely in the heat of summer right now but you know as far as the decor goes this is kind of more of a summer to fall piece I guess you could say now the moss that I have here I got from Dollar Tree and it is like a brown color moss but I really like it for the fall stuff I think it makes a great base for this one now I'm gonna also use the green mat to go in the round one and I just like to use a little hot glue and use some type of a stick or something or a tool to kind of poke in the edges so that they go down and you don't see an edge and I don't have to continue to cut. Now this is a beautiful succulent piece that I got um, from the thrift store and I think it is gorgeous. So I'm gonna put it to the side, I know I wanna use it and I'm gonna grab up the other things that I think I might wanna use and sort of put those into piles that are going to coordinate so that we can get our little miniature fairy uh, pieces together. So I'm adding a tiny bit, tiny bit on the stick and then on the base where her feet are. So she has some way to stand. And I'll start taking these pieces of greenery and making some type of little home for her. So I'm gonna just place these in here. I do not know what these are called. Do y'all know what these are? I don't know what they're called. They almost look like what we call gumballs from the uh, trees around where we live here in Southern Alabama. And I know they have those trees in Mississippi and Louisiana. They look sort of like that, but they almost look like a berry. I don't know, but they're beautiful as far as crafting. I like these types of things when it comes to berry, um, magical or, you know, mystical type things because they have that surreal look you know that otherworldly look that i think is so beautiful with the imagination that goes along with making fairy decor all right so i'm going to place these down i like the idea of this being kind of partly on one side of the handle and partly on the other side of the handle i'm going to cut down these pieces i can make them shorter and i can leave some tall that's going to give some dimension I can also use pieces that I've already cut off and add those. If you have a scrap pile, you can use your little scraps from your greenery for that. So now we have all of that little succulent down in there in different sections. I love how it's hanging down on one side. Very cute. And I'm going to add some of these little orange flowers. And she has an orange gown and some orange in her wings. She's got that beautiful honey colored hair. So I want to add some of that in there. And plus, you know, it's fall. So we want to have some fall in there with the beautiful purples. How cute is she? And we're going to do three of those. And I'd really like to know which one that you like best. That helped me a lot in the future with making videos. Oh, she's a cutie. I would love to be there. She's looking up in there. So cute. Okay, so now let's go to the next one. This is our little square basket. We've already got him glued down. So we have a little, we have a little fella there. I'm gonna use some eucalyptus. You can get these types of eucalyptus picks and also that bittersweet that's laying there at the Dollar Tree. Also, the little orange flowers laying there are from the Dollar Tree as well. The piece that I'm putting in now is just a little scrap piece of something that I thrifted. We're going to add those pieces in. I like to add different heights, different levels, um, you know, kind of keep it in the same color family as far as seasonal. But I definitely like to add little surprises here and there, you know. Now, I don't want these to fall out, so I'm just going to kind of add them to the side and add a little hot glue. And if you need to hold it in place for a minute or so, go ahead and hold it in place so that nothing falls over until the glue begins to set up. I still want it to be nice and neat. I look at this at a perspective of almost like if you could shrink yourself down and go into the picture. What would I like? What would I like around me? And then I think about fairies and all that innocence and magic that goes along with that. And 
what would make them happy? You know, what would I like to see with them? What would I imagine that they would have all around them? So in this scatter, I have some little things that look like pumpkins. They're not pumpkins, but they look like it. So why don't we just do a pumpkin patch in here? Maybe it's even some wild pumpkins growing. So I'm just gonna add those down there. And they're just gonna be here and there, just in some little open spaces. You know, be sure, like I've told y'all before, pick it up. Let's look at it from all levels, all sides. See what's going on. Are there any little peekaboo places where you can add a little something special that's unexpected? Add something. Look how adorable he is. Now the idea is to get him standing up where it looks like his feet are holding him up rather than the stick. So you don't want to see the stick, shove that all the way down in the file. And look how adorable. Yeah, this one is really cute too. Love the dimension in here. Okay, the next one is going to be the round basket. This is a little girl we're going to use. I'm going to take a larger pick. I'm going to pull these little squiggles out because to me that looks like Halloween, not fall. And I'm going to take this pick apart. You can cut it into pieces and then you can use each little individual piece however you like. And I love the idea of us having all different levels of height in here. You know, when you look at the forest floor, you see all different heights. You see little short mushrooms, you see trees that have fallen over, and you also see vines that climb the trees, and you see very, very tall trees that have been around for ages and ages. We want to see all that interest reflected in these little homes, dioramas, habitats, whatever you want to call it. So you can add your little flowers here and there. I'm also going to add some of these pine cone looking pieces here and there because I think the sunflowers are really pretty almost a showstopper in this one however she is going to be hidden in here and she's going to have a very nice little playground going on so keep watching so you can see what we do now I've added bittersweet as well and you just take those off the pick you know pull them off if anything needs to be cut off you can cut those off and then you can just add some pieces here and there so that um, you know you get that representation of color. See the beautiful pops of color there? I've just taken that off, put it on an extra little piece, and then look where she is. Look where I put her on the side. She's right there by the handle, you see? All right, let's make her something fun. This looked like a slide to me, and it has a little lip on the edge of it that fits perfectly on the basket. We're gonna just go with that and make it look like she's been playing and now she's just sitting down. Look at that, that's so cute. And I'm gonna put a pine cone, a little mini pine cone, right in the bottom of that loop of her little slide. And I'll add some pieces of that beautiful fern just to give it a little difference in texture. Yeah, that, yes, I like that. I like that very much. And those colors are so pretty with the dark green and that little pop of color. Now, since we can't make this stand up, but I want it to look like a little bundle, I'm going to use a twist tie. I've never done this particular thing before. I usually use wire, but I thought, hey, let's use the twist ties and see how they work. So I'm going to cinch it up really, really tight above those little, you know, little caps that stick to the wire stems. So they're right above that. Now it's going to make like a little triangle. I'm going to add the hot glue and that's going to give us a wider base when we put this down so that it can stand up on its own. Hold it in place until it is dry. And then I'm just going to add in some random bittersweet pieces here and there all the way around. Isn't that adorable? I think it's cute and I think it's adorable that she looks like she's getting ready to go down the slide. Look at that. You can be sure to, um, of course, bend your wires back and forth. Again, I want it to look like she's sitting because she's a sitter and not standing. Make it look like she's sitting there. I'm going to add some extra pine cones around her until it looks as comfortable and cozy as I like it. And I think that's pretty good. I love that. That's so sweet. I can't wait to decorate with these. They're probably going to be in my curio cabinet in my little secretary. Very pretty. We're going to use three of these pieces. I'm going to be using the white ones for this video. 
I'm gonna use my staple gun with a quarter inch staples. And then here are the three frames I'm using. There are also bronze and black. This is a little thrifted box, but you're gonna get one probably at Dollar Tree, and here's the measurement for you. So you can get something similar. It is square, and you can see that this is gonna fit nicely. So I'm going to take it with the face outward, and I'm going to staple across the bars to hold this in place. I feel like the staples are gonna do a much better permanent job holding these in place than if I used glue because too much moving around would probably make these pop off and I'm not interested in having a failed craft project. So we're gonna do what we know works. A staple is gonna hold this where it needs to be. There is a little black mark on the end of this so you can see right where you wanna put that staple. Makes it very convenient. Okay, so now we've got two sides done and let's go ahead and do the back side. We're gonna do the third side here and we're gonna do it exactly, whoop, we're gonna do exactly the same way. I hit my knee on the table, y'all. Okay, so now as I'm doing this, I'm trying to decide how to make this work. And y'all, this will bend perfectly to make an arch across the top. This is going to take a little patience, but we're gonna make this work. We are definitely making this work. So once I have it sort of curved here, so I know how I wanna put it together, I'm gonna to grab my E6000 can see I'm grabbing a bubble here and I'm gonna go from the bottom all the way up to where the top starts or the little um, the little arch stops that's as far up as we need to go I'm gonna add this I'm really gonna put it in tight I'm using that painters tape here to hold it where it is close enough to be in square so that while the glue is drying the uh, pieces won't move and it will dry completely um, as I want it to be. And then after it's dry, you can layer it with a little bit of hot glue, which I did just to be on the safe side, and I pulled all my tape off. So this is what we have so far. These little panels come with little hangers here. We're gonna use those hangers to help us in making and forming the top of this. I'm wrapping some jute through here and I'm just going to pull these pieces together and tie this in a couple of knots. You're gonna to have to hold the string because it'll wanna pull apart. And I'm making sure that the panels are where they need to be before I secure them all the way down. Because one panel will have to overlap, generally that back panel I believe I have sitting over these side panels. Yes, I do. So keep that in mind. One of them is going, if you want this to look nice and neat, you're going to have to make sure that you take your time bending this. And you can see that it's kind of flexing on the right here. But you don't have to worry about that because we can bend that back out once we get it tied. I'm trying to grab it so I don't let the knot slip. And I did it successfully. Then you're going to add a couple of knots in it and then wrap your string around it. I'm gonna grab my antiquing wax because we're going for rustic fall here. Really wanna make this look much more aged. What you see now is like a gold rub on it. And I would rather have a little antique look on this. So I want the antique waxing look and I'm going to use my chippy brush and I'm going to tap some of it off. And I don't want really strong lines anywhere. So I'm just gonna tap a little bit off and I'm going to use this to go over and age the inside. It's gonna be a little easier for you to see once we do the outside. I'll also be doing the box on the bottom as well, the front and all the pieces that you can see. So when you're using wax like this, if you get a line that's a little too strong for your taste, just rub it back off. It's not dry yet, so you, all you have to do is rub it right back off blend it in, rub it off. All of it makes it look like part of the aging process, which to me just really makes it look great for what we're doing. Okay, so now we went over that too. And here I'm just showing you how I did the entire bottom of it. Be very careful. It's gonna be hard for you to find a place to put your hand and that wax will come off until it's dry. I did let it dry overnight. This is an ornament that I got thrifting. I thought it was absolutely beautiful. It's got some little chips on it, but it really doesn't bother me we're going to start putting together this beautiful little candle box or this little lantern. I'm using scraps. 
that's it these are pieces of scraps that I have I'm going to use a little block of wood to be a riser and I'm going to put a flameless candle in there sitting on top of that riser I want it to be at a little bit different of a level if you want it to be a platform um, you can flip that box over in the other direction and it can be a platform but I like the idea of you know possibly not gluing things down or gluing as little as possible and being able to use this little lantern for multiple projects. I'm just going to take some pieces and place them in there. I want to kind of go with the colors I'm already using and the colors that are in that beautiful little bronze owl. So I'm adding these picks that came from Dollar Tree last year and then some other little picks and I'm just going to kind of show you along the way how that's going to look. You can see I'll wrap that top up nice and tight with that extra string. We're going to make a little riser for our owl friend and I'm just using two little pieces of these stumps that came from Dollar Tree in a bag. Love using their little wood pieces. And then you can place it on the inside and you can also glue it on the inside. I use some antiquing wax on that top so it would change the color. And we're going to continue to add until it is something that is close to what we think would be a completed project. You know I'm always going to show you a little extra if I can or show you something a little less but always give you ideas for how you can use it. I want to use a little bit of hot glue and some extra leaves on this and make it look like the owl is just sitting on a little pile of leaves. And I'll just glue him down there and he is um, glass so he is a little breakable thingy. You can see I'm holding it there for a minute because I really don't want it to break. And then when we turn on our candle, by the way, make sure you've got batteries in your candle and that it works so you don't break your heart when you get to the end and can't finish your project. Now we need a finial. So many ideas of different things you can use, but I love this that I pulled off of a thrifted piece. It's a little like a cabinet pull. And I think it looks good with this. So I'm gonna add some hot glue and then put that right on top. And it is resin. I did hold it for a minute to make sure that it dried. And then just to embellish the top or continue the look up, I'm going to add little stacks of leaves on the top. I got three on one side and we'll have three sort of on the other side. I think this turns out really pretty. Remember that table scatter? Here's some more of it. Grab some pine cones, some acorns, whatever you like, and put that down in the inside where you can see them and then I'm going to add a little pine cone right on the top just because I felt like it. I just felt like it.